Chapter 6 is all about ethics training. So it's really getting everybody on board to have dialogue about situations that most people will only talk about outside of work, which isn't good. You want them to talk about inside of work. So the chapter begins with the importance of building a trustful corporate culture where we can have dialogue and we can really help and we can trust one another. A lot of organizations are now doing ethics training. A lot of them are doing it because it's now required by law. If you're a publicly held company, you have to do it. The federal sentencing guideline gives you bonus points for doing it. Unfortunately, what a lot of organizations do when they do ethics training is they try to do it as cheap as possible, and the cheapest way to do it is web-based training. Don't get me wrong, there's some fantastic web-based ethics training out there. And you ought to do some web-based ethics training. However, occasionally I'm asked to review web-based training, and I disagree with what they think is the right thing to do. I, I remember this one particular situation with web-based training. The organization that created the web-based training, what should you do if you saw somebody had a pornographic picture on their computer screen? And the web-based answer was, immediately go tell the boss. Um, as an ethicist, I don't, that, that's, a, that's an okay answer, but as an ethicist, um, you ought to first tell that person, what's that pornographic picture doing on your computer screen? And the person's going to be embarrassed, and the person will probably say, I'll never do that again. And the problem is solved, the person keeps his job. So I don't think the best thing is go running to the boss. I think the first thing is you, you always approach the person one-on-one. -on -one. So therefore, you, you need to have discussions on ethical issues, and that means it needs to be facilitated. So the chapter gives the best practices on how to facilitate an ethics discussion, how to frame the issue, and then it gives my favorite 10 ethics training workshops. I've already mentioned about another chapter on how to do a workshop around a code of ethics and create a code of ethics. Uh, other kinds of training sessions you can do. You train your employees about the ethical decision-making process. Here are the questions, and then you throw at them different ethical dilemmas. Uh, how would you use these questions to respond to this particular ethical dilemma? You heard your boss say, um, you know, the, the uh, environmental regulators say we can only pollute 50 units. Uh, we're going to pollute 52. You know, that's not bad. You know, it's more than 50, but they're not going to check up us on it. And it's only a minor, minor difference. What do you do in a situation like that? Do you agree with them? Do you question them? Do you keep your mouth shut? So you, you create a workshop using those questions to answer those sorts of dilemmas. Uh, one of my favorite workshops that I do with a lot of organizations is I have my, the employees create their own ethical dilemmas. So I'll, I'll have all the employees in the workshop get together, and I tell them all by yourself, think about one situation where your personal values were in conflict with the decision that was being made, and describe that in a paragraph. Or think of a decision that was made that bothered your conscience. Also think about a decision where there was a conflict between your values and the organization's values and you convinced the organization to change based upon your value system. So they write these summaries and then when they write the summaries, they write them in a way that all the ethical dilemmas appear in my book. They summarize it in two paragraphs, they take you to the decision point and then they say, what would you do? And then you put the employees in small groups of five and each one reads their dilemma and they say, what would you do? And everybody else in the group has to say, what would they do in a situation like that? Would they turn in the boss? Would they tell the environmental regulators? Would they keep their mouths shut? Great discussions to have. There's also a workshop on how to do a fraud workshop and how to respond to theft. Uh, I have a couple workshops in there about personality things you can do in terms of doing conscientiousness, great surveys, great scales that you can use. Another fun workshop that a lot of companies have used is benchmarking an ideal employee. So the employees in the workshop describe what an, I, what an ideal employee would be like, and then they evaluate themselves to the ideal that they have. And sometimes what you'll find out is that their view of the ideal is not the same view as the boss's view of the ideal. So they talk about that. Why, why does the boss have one view of an ideal and the employee have a different view of an ideal? Uh, the last workshop in it is work as a calling. 
It is so exciting for me every day to teach at Edgewood College, to do business ethics workshop, because to me I view myself as a business ethics missionary. But you know what? When I worked for Green Union Supermarkets, I loved getting up every day because I wanted to create an ideal supermarket. When I worked for an economic think tank, I wanted to create an ideal economic think tank. Those are the kinds of employees you want. And this workshop is all about how to get people into that kind of a framework. That work is extremely important and how you can have that kind of a mission-driven life, even if you're a janitor or even if you're a CEO, that every day your life makes a difference. Thank you. Past the halfway chapters.